Howdy everyone. All right, so I am still working on these uh, fiberglass tips, if you will, for the various uh, tail pieces. So I have um, moved on to the rudder. And what can I say about the rudder piece? Well, first of all, there's a lot of cutting, right? You have to cut along this edge here on both sides. You have to cut this notch out here to go around this horn for the uh, rudder cables. This has to be cut out around this. And then you've got this cut out here for the hinge point. This, uh, let me see if I can get a better shot of that. This cut out in here. So it's not difficult work. Um, the good news is that this piece from Vans has a definite line where all of these cuts need to be made. So if you have this piece, check it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. There is a, a line all across here and it depicts where to cut all around here and down that, that whole top area, if you will. So what I chose to do, I kind of took a little bit of a gamble, but I went ahead and I cut right on that line everything. I cut this whole length around, around, and then the whole length across the bottom. I cut all of that right on that line. And that got me super close, but I still had to tweak it. I had to open this gap up a little bit, and uh, I had to open this up a little bit. But it's pretty simple. I just used a Dremel to do the initial cutting, a small cutoff wheel on a Dremel to do all of the initial cutting, and then I just used files to uh, to tweak it and hone it into place. A couple of things to keep in mind, of course, you've got this U-shaped cutout here. So if you're having fitting problems on this long edge, especially up toward the front, pay attention to this cutout because it could this could be hung up somewhere on this bracket and it's not allowing you to get this fit up here as nice as you'd want it. The other thing is that there is, at least with mine, there is a little bit of play fore and aft. So if you are if you can't get your back edge to line up nice with the edge of the rudder itself, again, it's in here that you'll have to play with to get this adjusted. Uh, the big thing that I dealt with was when you look at the trailing edge, this piece was kind of cocked. I had this long edge here fit nice, and I had the same long edge on the back side fit real nice. But when I looked at this edge as in relation to the trailing edge of the rudder, you could see that this piece here was definitely cocked. So as an example, if it was cocked this way, I would have to take material off of this bottom edge. The entire length of that bottom edge, I would have to take material off so that it would allow that to drop in line with the trailing edge. That took probably the most time just to keep tweaking that. And that was about it. Um, once I got it rough cut and I, got, I started trimming it down to get it to fit nice using files, I noticed that trailing edge misalignment started working on that a little bit at a time and it is now finished so that is now lined up as good as i can get it with the rest of the trailing edge the fit where's my finger the fit all through here is nice and the fit around the horn is decent and i say that just because i would have liked it a little bit tighter to the horn, but it's fine. I'm not going to freak out over it. And then, of course, this cutout here for the hinge. I dressed up the uh, um, the outer portion of this piece. There was a definite ridge basically down the middle along through here. I just knocked that down a little bit. There's still a little bit of an edge there, but I don't care, uh, mainly because I wanted to leave some meat in this area. I didn't want to get it too thin. My 7 is a 7. It is not a 7A. 
So this is going to be awfully low to the ground. No one will ever see it. Not that that matters because I really don't care. But um, I left this ridge on there a little bit high. Other than that, this is ready to go. So this particular piece, I'm still thinking about it, but I don't believe there's any reason why I can't go ahead and permanently attach this. So the next step will be to drill. I'll have to look what kind of hardware you use. I'm assuming you use the, uh, the CS4 countersunk pop rivets. So this will have to be drilled and countersunk. And I believe I can go ahead and pop rivet this in place. So of course I'll clean it up real good before I put it on permanently. But I believe this is ready to go. The next piece then will be the top piece for the rudder, which is this piece that you see here. This is the top tip that will go on the top of the rudder. And this is exactly like, what was that? The elevator ends, right? So like I had talked about with the elevator, you have this flange here, and this dimension is wider than the dimension here between this is the skin of the rudder this is the flange of this rib that fairing piece needs to rest in here so you have to cut it you have to cut this edge back and again you could see when you look between the edge of the rib and the hole there's not a lot of material there so, you know, there's going to be that edge distance concern, which I'm personally not concerned about. So I'm going to treat this just like I did the other ones. I'm going to cut the, I'm going to cut this back enough so that it will sit up against the skin. There won't be any interference, there won't be any interference in here with this rib piece. And then I'll just match drill it and countersink it and be done with it. So... Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'll finish up this bottom piece by getting it drilled and potentially proper of it on, and then I'll move on to that one over there. All right. And uh, that's it. So I'll get cracking on this new stuff, and I'll talk to you guys later.